and the first day that we were there, there was this guy up on the stage rapping, rapping. and he had this leather jacket on. <laughs> and I told my friend, wow, this is the best looking man I've ever seen in my life. Wow. <laughs> and I think it was really love at first sight. I didn't realize he had noticed me, uh, but I guess he had, as we found out later on. He was. And I definitely me? noticed <laughs> this. I noticed him up on stage, of course, but I was too shy to talk to him. Uh, so I had even told my friend, who uh, the other missionary who had come with me, I said, could you say hi to this guy and then introduce me? Because I was too shy. Who noticed you? I don't know. I think I um, so I was doing the music there for for a while. Like uh, I would I would come from a different town. I would come from Karen to Ngong. So uh, sometimes tired because this back in the days I looked good, but I was very broke. <laughs> so I would walk from Karen to Ngong. Yeah, yeah. Why not? So. So welcome to Miss Reche YouTube channel. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so to start with uh, Kim, tell mm. us your name, your country born, and where you are now. Okay, so I'm Kimberly Ngugi, and I was born in Canada, uh, in British Columbia there. Um, but in 2011, when I was 23, uh, God called me to Kenya. And as soon as I got here, I knew that this was home for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm Henry. Henry, I'm from Eldoret here in Kenya. I was born here in Kenya. Um, yeah, then we, we met in 2011. And then uh, we were here for, for a while. I was a student. I was a Bible student, Bible school student. And then I went with Heart Canada for a, few, for a few years. Came back with a lot of children. <laughs> now we're here in Kenya. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got four kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're in Kenya now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell us how it was growing up in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up in Canada is really nice. Um, I grew up in a city called Vancouver uh, on the mainland. It's right beside the ocean. So that was really wonderful. Lots of trips to the beach and fishing, uh, hiking. There's a lot of wonderful mountains there. So... I think as a, a child and a youth growing up there, there's so many wonderful opportunities. Um, even going to school there, there's a lot of opportunities there um, that they, they give you in school to do sports and different electives like uh, drama and, and art. And there's, yeah, there are a lot of opportunities there. So uh, I'm very grateful uh, for the place that I, I did grow up in. Um, and when we lived there together uh, as a couple and with our children, we moved to Vancouver Island. And the island was really wonderful because you're surrounded by beaches and many lakes. Um, and that was definitely something we really enjoyed doing was just having the opportunity to be outside in nature, lots of swimming and hiking and activities like that. So it's, uh, I think it's a wonderful place to, to raise your, your kids. And for me, it was a great place to grow up in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you schooled in Canada? I did, yeah. So I, I did all of my, uh, there we say elementary, <laughs> like primary and secondary education. And then uh, I went to college there as well, uh, where I studied early childhood education. And then I also specialized in uh, infant toddler and special needs care so I did uh, work there for a few years uh, in uh, like a preschool and daycare setting with young children before moving here. Mm -hmm. How many siblings do you have? I have three brothers. So I have one older and then it's me and then two younger were all two years apart. So I grew up with a house full of boys, um, which for the most part was a lot of fun. We did a lot of fun outdoor activities and things like that uh, yeah <laughs> amazing yes mm -hmm. okay how was it growing up in kenya mm -hmm. uh, awesome i mean um yeah i grew up in a small slum uh outside of Eldoret. uh walking this you can see our neighborhood from the city center called kipkarin road uh yeah it was quite small it's not even 
I, I say my neighborhood did not have a name. Our, our, the name of our neighborhood was a road to another neighborhood. <laughs> Keep current road. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was, it was cool. Um, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I did all my schooling around the same neighborhood from nursery, primary, uh, secondary, just down the road from, from our home. And um, yeah, it was, it was different. I grew up with a um, good different. It's, um, it was a quiet neighborhood. Um, uh, it had three brothers, personally, um, two, oh, two older brothers, myself and the younger sister. So, okay. yeah. So you schooled in Eldoret? Yes. Yeah, I went to a few, to uh, the primary school close to my home and then another one away from the other side of town, mm -hmm. a place called Kapsoya, and then I went back to Ingina Komstuni called Muruti down okay. there. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, um, Kim, tell us how you met. How we met. Okay, so before, <laughs> yeah. before you tell us how you met, tell us how you moved from Canada to Kenya mm -hmm. and when. Yes, yes. okay. Yeah. Uh, so I was actually 22 years old. I was working um, at a daycare in Canada and God very clearly told me to move to Kenya and, and uh, volunteer at a children's home. Okay. At the time, God had been doing a lot in my heart. Uh, my mom had passed away a year before when I was 21. And I think it put a lot into perspective just how short life can be and also what was important to me. I had really put a, a big importance on saving money so I could get a mortgage on a house and that was my goal. But I think it put into perspective how quickly all those things can go and how they don't really matter. So God has started working in my heart when he made it very clear, go to Kenya, actually don't even work, go volunteer at a children's home. So when I was 23 years old in 2011, now I came to Kenya to work at a children's home or volunteer at a children's home uh, for a six month term. But the second my feet landed in Kenya off the plane, I just felt an overwhelming peace that this is my home. This is where God wants me. And so I didn't tell my family at the time, but I knew I'm not going back to Canada. This is, this is home. And uh, we met just one month after uh, me being there. Uh, Sorry, before you meet, mm -hmm. why Kenya, not any other country in Africa? Uh, it was just God. He put Kenya on my heart. I had never been to Kenya. Uh, I didn't know anything about Kenya except they speak Swahili. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't know a single thing, but God had, he really put it on my heart. Kenya came into my mind. Wow. Uh, I can't really explain it. Mm -hmm. It was just, um, uh, it was just God. Okay. And so that was that. It was Kenya Ooh. from there on out. <laughs> uh, so I honestly, I didn't know anything about Kenya. Um, I think I definitely had my stereotypical ideas that it's, it's always warm mm -hmm. because it's in Africa. I think I came with a small sweater and I soon realized when the rainy season comes or July comes, oh, it does get cold and I needed to go buy a new set of clothing. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, you know, I knew people spoke Swahili, but I didn't know anything at all. So I started to do a lot of research. I started to read books. You know, I went to the library. I got books. I started learning some Swahili before I came. So at least I could have some basic communication skills. Um, I even tried making ugali at my home, which did not go well because we don't have the proper unga. I tried to patty. I tried the skuma. I think anything I could try myself, I would watch YouTube tutorials because I honestly didn't know anything about Kenya, but I knew this is where God wants me. So in the months leading up to me preparing to come, I now did all the research that I could ahead of time. I remember going to work and as I would transit there, I would be, I would be trying to learn Swahili from a book and um, yeah, getting all the information I could before okay. coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'll run into JKIA, Nairobi. Yes. Where were you going? Uh, so I was to stay at a children's home uh, in Gong just at the base of the Gong Hills there. So we, uh, I was working with an organization, okay. so they had planned accommodation for the oh, first yeah. night in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, so they picked us up. Uh, I had actually come with a friend. She was also coming for a few months. So they dropped us off at a host home. 
for one night. I think they did a day or two of training and then they drove us to Gong a few days later uh, to the children's home and and that was our home for the next six months. Okay. Mm -hmm. What shocked you? Uh, I, I guess, I mean, it, everything was very different than it was in Canada. The, the food was different. The way people cooked was different. You know, I remember eating ugali for the first time, how it was supposed to taste, not how I had tried making it <laughs> in Canada. And I remember thinking, wow, this, this is so bland. It doesn't taste good, but I need to like it because I'm sure this is my home. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, washing laundry by hand, that was a big learning curve because we have a lot of things that make our life convenient in Canada. You have microwaves, you have big ovens and stoves, you have laundry machines, you have dishwashers. So suddenly you're doing everything by hand. You have to slow down. And the way of life, it's so different here, but it was something that I, I realized I really enjoy. I enjoy slowing down and washing my laundry by hand because it gives me time to pray and talk to God. It's a, it's a different when you're involving four children, but when it was just me, <laughs> um, but that was a big learning curve trying to um, learn how do you wash laundry by hand? I had no idea. So I had to ask the children at the home, how on earth do I do, I do this? I had no idea. Um, we had bed bugs. The Ooh. first week I moved here, I had bed bugs. That was different, and you know, then... getting used to creatures and spiders and the bite you. and animals crawling on you. There was a lot of different learning curves. I think one of the biggest things that surprised me was all the means of transportation here. Uh, in Canada, you have maybe your personal car, you have a bus, and there's also a, depending on where you live, a sky train here. If I wanted to go into the town, I could take the motorbike. I could take a tuk-tuk. They have a lot of those in Gong still. I could take a matatu. Uh, I could even take a bicycle <laughs> or I could walk. So taxi. that was something that was there or a taxi. Like there's so different, yeah, many different means of transportation here. That was something that I think really surprised me. Mm -hmm. Okay. After now, you came for six months, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you ever thought of going back to Canada after all these sh kind of shocks? No, I, I think that I loved being with the children at the orphanage so much. I loved talking to them about Jesus, you know, sharing his love with them that despite things like bed bugs, okay. despite yeah. the heavy rains yeah. and the flooding and despite these challenges of, you know, the power going out. Sometimes we wouldn't have water because it would be too muddy. If in the rainy season, the water truck couldn't come. Mm. Now you can't have a shower. You can't, <laughs> a bucket shower. <laughs> you can't wash your laundry. You can't do these things. But despite all those challenges, I had so much joy because I loved what I was doing and what God had me here to do. So it was challenging there were some very tough days for sure but I don't think there was ever a time that I I wanted to go back to my comfy life in Canada I just I really enjoyed okay. everything about Kenya the good and the bad okay. yeah yeah that's amazing you're brave yeah <laughs> yeah that's bravery yeah. Mm -hmm. so tell us how you guys met so uh, I was living at a children's home just at the bottom of the Gong Hills mm -hmm. and I had begun attending a church in town I think I had only started going there maybe for one or two weeks mm -hmm. CBD uh, no it was Sitem Sitem Gong and they were holding a week-long uh, youth yes. summit yeah so, event yeah. for the youth yeah. so I got permission from the house mother to take all of the youth there every day for the whole week so we would walk it was about a 45 minute walk we'd walk from there to town every day and uh it was a week-long event and the first day that we were there there was this guy up on the stage rapping, rapping. and he had this leather jacket on <laughs> and i told my friend wow this is the best looking man i have ever seen in my life wow. <laughs> and I think it was really love at first sight. I didn't realize he had noticed me. 
Uh, but I guess he had, as we found out later on. He was. Yeah, you took and I definitely me. noticed <laughs> this. I noticed him up on stage, of course, but I was too shy to talk to him. Uh, so I had even told my friend, who uh, the other missionary who had come with me, I said, could you say hi to this guy and then introduce me? Because I was too shy. And she did that, and I was still too shy. I, I just shied away. But I guess... Uh, he had noticed me that, that week as well. And so he actually came to the children's home. Where and so where he yeah, found yeah. out where I was the staying. Yeah. He mm -hmm. came to the children's home and okay, as a, a white lady in Kenya, you sometimes get attention yeah. from men, men here. Men, yeah. So I had had a few men come to the children's home before interested to talk to me. But what stood out about him Actually, he didn't even talk to me at first. He was involved with the children. He helped to brush their teeth. He was sharing with them. I was in the middle of a, a devotional, a Bible study with the kids. And he came and he rapped for them. And it wasn't until the end of the day that now we finally spoke. And I found out, oh, he had actually come mm -hmm. to see me. Mm -hmm. But I love to see how interested he was uh, with the children because I love children uh, and that was something important to me to see someone I'm interested in. Do they also have a love for children and youth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of in brief uh, how we first met and started. Mm -hmm. You know, we went from there. Yeah. So back mm -hmm. to you, Henley. Yeah. Who noticed you? I don't know. I think I... Um, so I was doing the music there for, for a while. Like uh, I would I would come from a different town. I would come from Karen to Ngong, so... Uh, sometimes tired because this back in the days I looked good but I was very broke <laughs> so I would walk from Karen to Ngong okay. so a long distance it's a long walk yeah I was in school Bible school in Karen so I would walk to the summit uh, you know at that time I think most of my meals were the meals for the summit lunch because so you're tired you but I really loved you know just expressing God through music so that, that energized me so um, yeah, from stage it was easy to notice, you know, you, you, it's so easy to notice, to notice two people who are the holy ones, they're different from everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's, you know, Kenyan and like me, and then two who are not. But, um, yeah, but there was just something distinct. Mm -hmm. I think I remember the song I was doing and it was very specific and I thought, oh, it was just something, you know? So afterwards, um, there's a guy who would come to our church. He's still our friend today. Mm -hmm. he, uh, uh, Mike, we call him, and uh, Mike would, was working at that children's home. Mm -hmm. So I had been visiting the children's home before meeting her. Mm -hmm. we, we had done oh, some okay. stuff there with the church. So I knew Mike, Mike knew me. So I went to see to see her, then I ran into Mike. Okay. And then Mike, you know, of course told her I passed by. And then when I came to the day we met, like she said, they were working on, you know, doing a devotional. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we continued getting involved in that, um, in that children's home. But... Uh, to answer the question, I think we noticed each other. I didn't know that at the time until we started talking. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say, hey, do you mind having a cup of coffee? And then someone says, oh, I was thinking the same thing. And then you're like, oh, mm -hmm. that is, yeah. So okay, okay. that was very, very nice. Oh. Yeah. Except I didn't have money to buy the coffee. So I said, unless you pay. So she did. He was he was very <laughs> upfront. And Henry is very real and very yeah. honest yeah. and transparent. And that's something that I like. Be, and yeah. that's important to me. So okay. He was very real about who he was, and okay. yeah. I was infatuated with how he looked. I said, ah, yeah. oh, it's okay, okay. of course. <laughs> I, I must have looked good, not anymore, but yeah. <laughs> Four kids later, and yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, so going to, to the children's home where okay. she was working, Yeah. you were going to meet her, or you were going to look for Mike? No, I want to see her. You yeah. want to see her? Yeah, yeah, so I... um. Like I said, I lived in Karen, but I also volunteered in a few other children's homes. Yeah. I had volunteered in two, specifically one that was up up the hill from where her children's home was. Mm -hmm. If you're not going on the way to, there's a hill down to the Maasai area. So her home was um, a less funded home. It was more of a non-Christian home. More, most of the kids would hear the gospel at the home, mm -hmm. um, maybe for the first time or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then I, I was staying at a home that was a Christian home with a church in the in the building. Yeah. yeah, so I remember waking up one morning and I thought, after our prayer time, I just felt, you know what, uh, let me go meet her. Let okay. me just go and, and try to get to know her, try to connect. Okay. Then I ran into Mike, Mike and I chatted, and, and she wasn't there that day. So The first time. Yeah, yeah. so Mike yeah. said, you know, uh, 
I, I I left my number with Mike again. I just said give him oh, my number. Oh, you left the number. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. you insist how yeah. you, <laughs> yeah. so you left the number. So again. I left my number with Mike, and then um and then she called. You called. Yeah, right? when I came home, yeah. I had been out that day. Yeah. I came home, and Mike said. Mm-hmm. This guy, Henry, he's left his number here. And my first thought was, ah, it's one of these mm-hmm. these guys that are going to disturb me again. Mm-hmm. And then he explained, Henry, he's the one that was rapping. I went, oh, oh my gosh, he's come to see me. So I said, I need his number. I called him right away and I said, I'll be at the home. I'll be here tomorrow. So are you able down. to come? <laughs> and yes, so he came he came the next day, and and that's where I had yeah. shared my story of him, yeah. him coming and and helping me, you know, with so the, the devotional. Next day and... he came. It was your first date, you guys. Uh, I <laughs> maybe I not know. the first date. Maybe not the date. We but, hadn't uh, decided. It was, it was the first uh, experience. Let's go with it. Yeah, <laughs> encounter. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, we were brushing the kids' teeth and, uh, you know, putting their every toothbrush uh, uh, would go in, the, in a specific bag with the name of the child. So we keep them. Mm-hmm. Most of those kids now are gr- grown and, and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, in mm-hmm. high school, college now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it was it was different. It was nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the Bible. I love Jesus. I love children. And they were doing all of these things in one space. Uh, it was nice. It was mm-hmm. comfortable. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a good experience. Friends. I think we started out like yeah, that, yeah. for a day or two, and then, uh-huh. and then I think we decided pretty quickly. To go on a date. Yeah, yeah, I think we want to be more than friends, mm-hmm. and so we, um, yeah, dating. we we started Not dating, gong, gong, and we uh, we used because I the home was at the base of the Gong Hills, and I know I think it's very different now, but back in 2011, it was just a few windmills at the top, so we would actually hike from the from the children's saw. home. We would hike to the top. It used to be just very quiet and peaceful. Uh, Henry would usually pack, he would pack a yogurt uh, or maybe some mandazi and maziwa, some milk. And and then we would go up there with the Bible. We'd go to the top of the hills. It was just us and the windmills. And we would read the Bible. We would have maybe some yogurt, a small snack. And that was like a typical date for us. So I think, you know, we did that a couple times and then went up the hill yeah. and then i said yeah i think we should see where this you know relationship can okay. can go okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. so now reaction from both of your parents and friends mm-hmm. you now you're dating mm-hmm. your side. yeah it's uh it's interesting because of course i had met his family but my family had not met him so he did talk to my dad my dad uh on it was skype back, back in those then. days yeah. skype was the big thing mm-hmm. so he did talk to my dad on skype and said yeah i'd really like to marry your daughter and my dad said okay <laughs> but you know they had never met him so i think when i told everybody uh hey i've you know okay one thing i had now gone to kenya that was a big surprise for everybody that i wanted to stay there everyone knew i was going f- for six months yeah. But everyone was quite shocked that I wanted now to live in Kenya. Everyone expected me to come back, come back to my job. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So now adding on top of, I'm going to live in Kenya, adding on top of that, now I've met this guy and actually we're going to get married after, you know, it hasn't even been one year. Uh, I think everyone was, in some way they were surprised, but in some ways I think they kind of expected something like that from me because I don't really conform to what everybody else does. Like I said, everyone thought I'll come back, I'll continue with my job and continue with what everyone does. You work, you get a house, you get married, you stay in your own country. Uh, Exactly. So I think in some ways, no one was that surprised. I think they kind of expected, ah, Kim might do something like this. And friends? Uh, friends, uh, I think they're very supportive. I, like I said, I had one friend that came with me initially to Kenya. Mm-hmm. She went back home uh, to Canada, but uh, she had met Henry, actually. She's one of my best friends, and she had met Henry, so she was very supportive. I think all my everybody was actually very supportive, mm-hmm. but definitely there's a little bit of shock there. But no one ever once said, no, you shouldn't marry him or anything like that. But it was, of course, tough because they hadn't met him. And they wouldn't meet him until two and a half years after our marriage, our our wedding. Yeah, Yeah. they did eventually meet him, but we had been married at two years at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and your friends and family, how was the reaction when you introduced the white girl? 
I think the surprise was uh, the introduction part. Yeah. So I never brought any girl home. So when Kim came home, my mom knew, oh, this could be something serious. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it is different, right? It's different. You don't know where it's going. Uh, at that time, you, you just, you know, I like you, you like me. And, and we are, you know, mm-hmm. so uh, for her being cross-culturally uh, different from, from me, culturally different from me, it was easy for my mom to, or even my family to, to be welcoming because my brother had done um, uh, a cross tribal marriage. My brother married from outside of our tribe. So that was uh, my older brother. So that already helped the family be easy, uh, you know, helped with an easy transition. So when Kim came, she, she was not the first one to not be a Kikuyu. So that was good. And then I know being Kenyan and and uh, of course uh, different color that that would get used to, you getting used to, mm-hmm. yeah, used, getting to. used to yeah my mom doesn't speak a lot of English but she continued being accommodating and mm-hmm. my brothers were super chill mm-hmm. my friends were excited uh, and I yeah. think I knew a lot of your friends, friends from, from school, mm-hmm. school because I was living there and from mm-hmm. doing mission work a lot of mm-hmm. our friends she met all my friends yeah mm-hmm. are also within the church or would do missions so. I when think I, the friends when, was easy. When I told my roommate, <laughs> uh, she's, she said yes. He was sad because that meant he would have to move out. We had a nice <laughs> nice single house next to the school. And the deal was whoever gets married first, the rest have to move. So I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to move in once we got yeah. married. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How was the dating life? Huh, it, was, it was quite short. We didn't date long, actually. We got engaged pretty quick. But it was... It was great. Like I said, I think a typical date for us would be, uh, actually, often he'd come to the children's home. Mm-hmm. He got to know the house mother there, so she was always welcoming him was very nice. uh, to come speak to the children, to do his rap. Uh, so we spent a lot of time at the home together. Uh, we'd go for a lot of walks. You know, I think at the time, I wasn't working, uh, and he was in school. So most of our dates were going for walks, we would grab a yogurt or, or a mandazi and we would just picnic, chat. Picnic a lot, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that was, yeah, but mm. uh, it, I guess it didn't last for long because he brought me home to meet his his mom mm. after just a few weeks. After, after, after a few weeks of dating, yeah. you were engaged? Uh, uh, no. We were engaged after a few months, months yeah. but I think we knew we after just a few months. weeks. We did it for mm. six months and then she went back. To, to Canada. I went back after six months. Yeah, yeah. her period was done. Uh, I went, right? I went, yeah, so we are, I was at the home for six months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My term had ended, so I had to go back. And also my, I was on a visitor visa at the time. So in order to get another one for six months, you need to leave and come back. Mm-hmm. So I went back to Canada. And as soon as I got to Canada, I said, I need to be back in Kenya. So I was there for a total of five weeks. I tried to do a bit of fundraising because, like I said, I was just there volunteering. I had no income, so I tried to do a bit of fundraising at churches and and let people know I'm now going back to Kenya for good. And this is what I want to do. And, you know, I want to be a a full full time. Thank you. A full time missionary. So I did a bit of fundraising, but five weeks. That was it. I I came right back. Um, yeah, we were engaged after six months, but I think I met his mom after just a, a few. few weeks. Like, I think we knew right away, this is my person and this is who I want okay. to spend my life with. Okay. Mm-hmm. How did he propose? Yeah, so we, uh, he had taken me for Nyamachoma at this really neat joint. It's, uh, they have a big property. Yeah, up in the Maasai land in uh, Kisirian up there on the mm. way to Kajiara. There's just a hidden Nice place. So this time I think I wasn't that broke now. <laughs> we had done a music video up there and I thought this is a nice place. It's very secluded. It's nice. Mm-hmm. So we went out there. Yeah. We mm-hmm. drove up there. I brought my brother's car. Uh, we went up there and we were having a machoma and juice. Yeah. I And then I, I had the ring in the juice. So yeah, it hit the ring. Praying, let, let, don't, <laughs> don't let me don't drink let it. it. Don't let it drink it. So yeah. I had, yeah, I had taken a <laughs> sip of the juice, mm-hmm. and my first thought was, "Oh my gosh, the server has dropped something okay. in here. How awful is that?" And then I look again, and actually, uh, because my mom passed away, I had my dad gave me permission to take uh, the her engagement ring. 
So I had actually given it to him. I said, this is my mother's engagement ring. You can surprise me one day. And I had no clue. It was such a big surprise. You know, he was leaving for a mission actually the next day for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And so I hadn't thought, oh, he's going to propose to me today when he's about to leave. Mm. Uh, yeah. So I went to take a sip of my juice and then I, I had to look at it again. I thought, oh my gosh, wait a minute. That's my mother's engagement ring. Mm -hmm. I guess there's not much. I think I nailed down. Come on, man. You did not. Okay. I did a lot of cliches that work though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, after I found it in the cup, I can't remember who took it out. Was it me or you? But he got I think down. I, collected it, yeah. I think you probably got your hands in the the juice, and uh, he got down on one knee, and you know I don't remember now exactly what you said. So all the cliches. On, on something the very beautiful. It was beautiful, and I said yes, and uh, yeah. yeah, it was just. And then the guy who came wonderful. to bring the nyamachoma I don't arrived. He brought the nyama. I don't think I ate. I was like, she said yes. Yeah, we told him. Oh, yeah, he's... Was excited. <laughs> Were you excited? Yeah, we. I was so excited. Okay. Yeah, it just, it just felt right. You know, we, like, yeah, I think we were engaged after nine months, and then we got married. Oh, it was eight months or nine, and then we got married three months after. We got married after eleven months. Yeah. But everything just seemed to fall in place. Perfect. You know, like he was a local missionary and we just said, ah, oh, here I am as a missionary too. It just makes sense to do it together. We love each other. We're both living on our own separately. Like why not get married? So I think we both had so much peace in our hearts about it. Uh, yeah, we were, I was so excited. I, I was so shocked and surprised. I didn't expect it to happen mm -hmm. when it did. Um, yeah, it all happened quite quite fast though from dating to being engaged to getting married but it just yeah. felt right just and we had a good piece flowing. about it yeah. mm -hmm. so now reaction from both of your parents and friends mm -hmm. is now you're dating mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's interesting because of course i had met his family but my family had not met him so he did talk to my dad, my dad uh, on, it was Skype back, back in then. those days. Yeah. Skype was the big thing. Mm -hmm. So he did talk to my dad on Skype and said, yeah, I'd really like to marry your daughter. And my dad said, okay. <laughs> but, you know, they had never met him. So I think when I told everybody, uh, hey, I've, you know, okay, one thing I had now gone to Kenya. That was a big surprise for everybody that I wanted to stay there. Everyone knew I was going for six months. Yeah. But everyone was quite shocked that I wanted now to live in Kenya. Everyone expected me to come back, come back to my job. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So now adding on top of, I'm going to live in Kenya, adding on top of that, now I've met this guy and actually we're going to get married after, you know, it hasn't even been one year. Uh, I think everyone was, in some way they were surprised, but in some ways I think they kind of expected something like that from me because I don't really conform to what everybody else does. Like I said, everyone thought I'll come back, I'll continue with my job and continue with what everyone does. You work, you get a house, you get married, you stay in your own country. Uh, exactly. So I think in some ways, no one was that surprised. I think they kind of expected ah, Kim might do something like this. And friends? Uh, friends, uh, I think they're very supportive. Uh, like I said, I had one friend that came with me initially to Kenya. Mm -hmm. She went back home uh, to Canada, but uh, she had met Henry, actually. She's one of my best friends, and she had met Henry, so she was very supportive. I think all my everybody was actually very supportive, mm -hmm. but definitely there's a little bit of shock there. But no one ever once said, no, you shouldn't marry him or anything like that. But it was, of course, tough because they hadn't met him. And they wouldn't meet him until two and a half years after, years after our marriage, yeah, our, yeah. our wedding. Yeah, mm -hmm. they did eventually meet him, but we had been married at two years at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and your friends and family, how was the reaction when you introduced the white girl? I think the surprise was uh, the introduction part. Yeah. So yeah. I never brought any girl home. So when Kim came home, my mom knew, oh, this could be something serious. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is different, right? It's different. You don't know where it's going. Uh, at that time, you you just you know I like you, you like me, and and you are you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, for her being cross culturally uh, different from from me, culturally different from me, it was easy for my mom to or even my family to to be welcoming because my brother had done um, uh, a cross 
tribal marriage. My brother married from outside of our tribe. So that was uh, my older brother. So that already helped the family be easy, uh, you know, helped with an easy transition. So when Kim came, she, she was not the first one to not be a Kikuyu. So that was good. And then I know being Kenyan and, and uh, of course, uh, different color that that would get used to you getting used to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, used to. used to. Yeah. My mom doesn't speak a lot of English, but she continued being accommodating. And mm-hmm. my brothers were super chill. Mm-hmm. My friends were excited. Uh, and I yeah. think I knew a lot of your friends, friends from, from school, mm-hmm. school because I was living there and from mm-hmm. doing mission work. A lot of mm-hmm. our we, friends, met all my friends yeah. mm-hmm. are also within the church or would do missions. So I when think I, the when, friends was easy. When I told my roommate, <laughs> uh, she's, she said yes. He was sad because that meant he would have to move out. We had a nice, <laughs> nice single house next to the school, and the deal was whoever gets married first, the rest have to move. So, I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to move in once we got yeah. married. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How was it planning your wedding? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> it was <Yeah>. interesting. <laughs> African crazy, North American weird. I don't know. Um, it, it was tough, I think, mm-hmm. having the two cultures because there's the way I'm used to weddings yes. in North America and then there's Kenyan weddings and I think they're very they're very different you know in Canada we keep time first of all and usually the shorter something is the better so the ceremony is usually you know maybe one hour then you have the reception it's it's a bit longer but uh, and you don't invite everybody that has come to the ceremony they don't all come to the reception so it's a smaller group and you share your meal together uh, in Kenya, of course, it's a, it's an all-day thing. And uh, and so it was really tough because I think I... A day and a half, a day and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know who's Sometimes coming. Tedious. Like, trying to plan the food was really tough. And yeah. so I was, at the time, I had only lived in Kenya for a year. Yeah. So I was still very much in my Canadian mindset and really pushing a lot of my Canadian things. I Hopefully, I'm not like that so much anymore. No, you're uh, still the same. A little bit. Thank you. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was, it was a challenge because uh, actually my family wasn't, none of my family could make mm-hmm. it to the wedding. Mm-hmm. And so we decided yeah. because I'm not going to have any of my family and any of my friends there, we decided we should kind of make a guest list and not invite yeah, maybe 500 needs. people that yeah, I don't so that's know. Trouble, though. That's mm-hmm. trouble. So it when we trouble. dated, one of the things I did was I made sure she met. Uh, especially in, after we uh, got engaged, she met almost all my aunties, my mm-hmm. cousins, and stuff like that. So uh, we decided to to invite only the people that she's met, you know, so she's more comfortable. So if it's uh, my mom's cousin over there who we haven't met yet, we didn't invite. Mm-hmm. But then word spreads out, oh, uh, Henry's marrying Mzungu. Now it goes to every cousin and the other, and my Shosho's sister or cousin who's... Uh, so it was, Who you uh, haven't seen in 20 yeah. years. So and... there was supposed to be a huge, like a graduation in high school or from, you know, so a huge bus to come out. And we were like, no, we can't do that. We wanted to limit the wedding to 120, 100 and mm-hmm. something people. Mm-hmm. It was, it was hectic. Yeah, it was it trouble. Did, yeah. did cause we, some it did cause some trouble. It did cause a lot of trouble, okay. yeah. But yeah. in the end, I think we got, I think we were very happy with yeah. the wedding that we had. We, you know, we had a smaller... People, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we had a few extra people show up, but the caterer was so good, they knew yeah. that will happen and they were prepared. Uh, but we yeah. had a smaller wedding. We had it uh, outdoors. School, yeah. We did outdoor and then we did the reception. The reception inside. was inside. Yeah. In Karen. Yeah. In Karen. Yeah, in my yeah actually. Mm-hmm. At, uh, so your family traveled from Eldoret to yeah. Nairobi? From, yeah, they, by this time, the people had moved from Naivasha, another group from Eldoret, yeah, okay. to Nairobi, oh, yeah. to Karen, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was, it was very intimate. Canadian, mm-hmm. a little bit Kenyan. Um, the dancing was definitely Kenyan. The dancing, of course, mm-hmm. yeah, you have to have the dancing. So mm-hmm. it was, it was a good combination of both. But I think that the big issue was mm-hmm. the, the guest list. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were upset. Mm-hmm. Maybe people yeah. we haven't seen in you don't ages. Don't put labels on the table and say John and Uncle Flan is sitting here. You, that's not <laughs> yeah. happening, right? So. So we kind of had to do that and then have a table of surprises. And yeah, Mm -hmm. if I was to do it again, maybe I would do it more Kenyan and trust God for money. Mm -hmm. We were again, we were not very loaded, so yeah. Yeah, So the wedding day was beautiful, it was amazing. It was, yeah, I think it 
it did end up it ended up being exactly how we wanted uh you know we're kind of very simple people so it was a simple wedding mm -hmm. uh yeah it was it was great i was just was so good. happy to finally get those papers you know and say ah cuz i felt yeah. like you know we loved each other so much and it was just nice to now finally do this official thing and now we can finally you know start our lives together yeah um Yeah, it was wonderful. We had our photos done on the Gong Hills, mm -hmm. like we yeah, said. Well, we did it it was a, yeah. yeah, it was a special spot for us. And and back then, I think they've done a done lot, a lot of work on it now. On it now but, back but back then, it was just, just the windmills there. there. Yeah. Yeah. there no hotel, nothing up there. Nothing. So we just so we drove, drove up there, got our, got our photos done <laughs> with some <laughs> sheep. My kids. No one bothered us. It was just, it was a beautiful day. We did, yeah. yeah. We uh, we went to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. We had never been there, yeah. and it was interesting because after two days, uh, I think I got food poisoning or something, mm -hmm. and so that was not the plan we had for our honeymoon. Uh, but we extended it. We had a friend who lived close by, so we recovered at his. I recovered. He was a little bit sick. We yeah, checked out of the hotel. Yeah. We recovered there Living for a few days, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we drove to Naivasha, and we found a new hotel, yeah. and now we anymore. finished yeah. the rest of the honeymoon there. So we, cool, it was yeah. supposed to be, I think, one week, and it was kind of extended, extended yeah. for about a week and a half because oh, of the okay. sickness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it all worked out it okay. It was well, at the same time. Yeah. Oh, wow. was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now after getting married, uh huh. Where next? I was still st I was still schooling, so I yeah. um, I went back to school. I finished um, my two-year program, mm -hmm. and then uh, from there now, uh, we quickly realized I I love I love schooling. I'm still a student. Okay. We, I was a student when we met. I'm still a student. Yeah. You said so, you were schooling. Yeah, What? I was I was studying Bible. I've always studied Bible. So Bible. Uh -huh. Yeah, I started doing mission work, like I said, and then I, I'm still doing a. Uh, a doctorate in Bible line too. Um, I'm actually doing something called um, uh, leadership global. What doctor of global leadership? Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. this Bible training and, and missionary work. So we went back to school. Then we realized I need to go do further education, graduate school, uh, and then I, I've always hunted and looked for scholarships and work studies. Mm -hmm. So I went to look the UK, look everywhere, and then she said, "Why don't you try Canada?" Okay. Her mm -hmm. family is in Canada. God is great. I found a school in the same city, in BC, mm -hmm. the same province. The same city as So we family. went to Canada, and I was a student as, at the same time as we got to know her family. Mm -hmm. So was, finally, yeah, that was oh, amazing. finally. So married in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Lived for a few years here. Yeah. Three years altogether. Three years, yeah. three years after three years. Three years altogether. Yeah, we went to, to Canada. Mm -hmm. Canada. In Canada in 2014. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the plan, kind of our plan was, okay, he'll finish his, were you doing your master's? Yeah, master's. His yeah. master's, it was we a two-year program. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. thought, oh, he did two years there. And then come we'll back. come back to Kenya. Yeah. We've always have had a heart for Kenya. Yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, but then we had our firstborn, and then the secondborn, mm -hmm. then the thirdborn. And, and so we found, oh, now we're here one year, two years, three years, three, up four, to five, with six, six, seven. six almost, almost seven, seven years. Seven years in Kenya. And our last mm -hmm. born daughter was born. She yeah, was born yeah. here in Kenya. But mm -hmm. by the time we had three kids and he had done his school, Mm -hmm. um, got in a job there. We had, yeah, we had really settled into to Canada and life there. And so again, we had to have a, a discussion. And I think I had always wanted to come back to Kenya. I just love the, the way of life here. Mm -hmm. uh, and for Henry, he, I think he loved a lot of things about Ken Canada. It's as well, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's also didn't a great want to place. Come back, but I, I, I knew we were called here, like yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's different, and I kind of wanted to stay longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, again, you follow God, so yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we, God. I, I think our life has a lot of you know mm -hmm. being sent, mm -hmm. where God is sending you there, sending you here, and okay. and just following. Uh, we've seen every time we follow, good things happen. So mm -hmm. so we can. So you went back to Canada. How was yeah. life in Canada with now a family, a married married person, and also studying? Yeah, we were just two when we went. We were yeah. single. We were. Married, for about, but just two, for yeah. about one year, and then yeah, yeah, and yeah. then Michelle. It was came different. Along. I mean, it's um, if especially if you've been around Nairobi, Nairobi is so we have a huge population for the amount of people. At this time, mm. uh, in 2014, Kenya was 50 million people. I think 49, 50. Mm. 
and Canada was 50 million people in 2014. Mm -hmm. But you see, the Kenya is like uh, it can go into Canada almost 10 times the size. Canada is very big, mm -hmm. the second largest mm -hmm. country in the world. So for the amount of people and the sec and the and you know the population ratio. Mm -hmm. Canada was very surprising because you, you would go to a parking lot. If you go to Nakumat back in the days, there was Nakumat. If you see Nakumat, there's so many people that cars. In Canada, there's so many cars than people in a parking lot. And I'm like, just very, very weird. Uh, I, I would see more cars than people. And I'm like, yeah. So it was different that way. Um, and the way they socialize and stuff like that. But <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. uh, I quickly, you quickly learn. Because the systems work. There is a mm -hmm. system. I mean, if it's, you know, if it's uh, crossing the road, there's a system that everyone respects the zebra crossing. Okay. Back then, uh, Kenya now is changing, but back then, mm -hmm. you can get hit by a matatu on the zebra crossing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, so there was a lot of getting used to things. You can easily get used to it because everyone is following it. In fact, when you don't follow it, you look crazy. Yeah, yeah. so if it's a red stop light, um, a red light, if you're driving, if you don't stop, you will look weird. So eventually, it doesn't mm. matter how crazy you are, yeah. you just stop because yes. everyone else is doing that. Yeah. I think driving was the biggest challenge for, for him to get used to because he's used to Kenyan. Kenya, where maybe driving, you don't have yeah, traffic yeah. lights, you you look out for yourself. You he's a crazy driver. driver. Yeah. And I had to tell him, Henry, you have to follow the rules here. You cannot, if there's a pedestrian, they have the right of way. Oh, that was a big one for him to get used to. Yeah. You wait for this person to cross and then you you go if you're allowed if the light says so so that was a that was a challenge that was yeah, yeah. there was a lot of it's challenges crazy. and a lot of also wonderful things about being there too yeah, yeah. so now he's right now no, no, back in canada. Canada. Oh, oh back in canada yeah so actually no i was the one to go back to work oh. Oh. uh i thought i'm going to be a missionary forever that's my life and then uh he's yeah like he said he wanted to continue his studies abroad so i had never expected to go back to work in a, a classroom setting but now here i was working full time and i had actually got the same job as i was working uh, at before the same place yeah so i worked specialized in the fine arts uh, and so I was actually working with a, a toddler group so I would take care of about 12 kids with two other ladies um, yeah so I worked in a daycare there um, for about one year mm -hmm. and then we had our, our firstborn son so I was able to go on maternity leave for a year and then I did go back to work but it was just kind of part-time uh, and then I think after the second born by the time we had the third, I thought, oh, I'll just stay at home. There's no point to keep working at a daycare with other people's too, yeah. children. And at that point, now he had finished school and he was able to work full full time. So, so yeah, it was an interesting switch from being in Kenya and being, you know, volunteering to now going back to Canada, getting back into that routine of working Monday to Friday. It was a hard switch for me because I think I had really come to love the way of life here it's slower it's not as fast paced uh, there in Canada you can work the whole day and then you can still fit in many things into your evening because like Henry said there's these systems and people keep time you know nothing is going to surprise you in the day if you're going to the grocery store you'll be in and out nothing's going to happen on your way there or on the way back you can go shopping you can go to a bible study you can do some volunteer work and still do a full eight hour of day of, of work in the day mm -hmm. um so it was a big i think it was a big switch for all of us moving to canada to a very fast-paced life keeping time you know i told henry when he started going to school i said you need to show up to your class on time otherwise they'll kick you out of the program if you're late by a minute so i said you show up on time you know uh, yeah, or even early if you can. <laughs> so all your yeah. children were born in Canada? Um, the first three were born there, mm -hmm. and then we had moved back to Kenya in 2020. So we've been here for about two and a half years now. Yeah. And our last born daughter, Nema, mm -hmm. she just turned two last two. week. Mm -hmm. So she was born, she was born in yeah. Kenya, uh, in Gilgil. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. So mm -hmm. you came back to Kenya in 2020? Yeah. Yeah, September. Mm -hmm. September and started. Yeah, yeah we nice. yeah. we've had a lot of start overs. You know, our life here as a married couple, 
And then again, having to sell everything, move to Canada, start there again. Mm -hmm. And now sell everything again, which was much more because we had the three children. Yeah. That was a very big move that was a real one. <laughs> because we had been in Canada for almost seven years. So we had really plugged in there. We had a home. We had three of our children there. So okay. now having to pack m- up. M- yeah, sell most of our things, pack up just a few of our possessions and move here. It was a big, it was a big move that with big three one. children. And COVID had just and hit. COVID was yeah. crazy oh, COVID at that was. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was pregnant yeah. also. She was pregnant. It, was, yeah. it was a lot. It was a big move, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. yeah. So what made you come back? Mm-hmm. I think it's just the idea of being sent again. I mean, we kind of felt we needed to come. God was pushing in our hearts to come and do mission work here. So uh, we, did not, we didn't know COVID would bust out. So in 2019, we started, you know, praying and, and it was clear we should come. So we started planning towards 2020, September 2020. And then okay. that February, I think, mm-hmm. is when... Um, Corona picked up mm-hmm. from, um, mm-hmm. from uh, you know, uh, from Asia and down to everywhere now. Mm-hmm. So when we came, it was in the thick of things. It was just in the yeah. insane time, but we couldn't change our minds. We prayed about it. Let's not go because of COVID. And then if we didn't, maybe we would have been waiting till now. So yeah. we know our God is bigger. Okay. So it was crazy getting here, but <laughs> we did. Yeah. <laughs> so before you Tough. moved uh, to Canada, you were living in Nairobi, right? In Karen. Yeah. Uh, just in outside Karen. of Nairobi. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now from Canada mm-hmm. in 2020, where did yeah. you settle? Uh, we went to my mom's in Naivasha. Naivasha. Yeah. Yeah. First, okay. yeah. We stayed at my mom's for how many months? Five uh, or four? Six. Six, no, six, yeah. months six months from months. September to yeah. February. She so then... stayed you for six months, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then we rented now in Gilgil. And yeah. Then... Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was interesting because we had just... You know, we had been used to a way of life in Kenya. Mm-hmm. We had to adjust now when we moved the to Canada. Canada. Yeah. And then again, adjust coming back to Kenya. So there was all this reverse culture shock. Mm-hmm. We are coming with children as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then now we are coming to live in his mom's house. And it was just... Who were with Kenyans who were very Kenyan. Very <laughs> Kenyan. <laughs> so it was, it yeah, was really so interesting. We, had to, we quickly had to learn about... Um, uh-huh. being very Kenyan too, right? So, so now, before um, I understand you, kid, your, your three kids were born in Canada mm-hmm. and now you're moving to Kenya. How did you prepare them? Mm-hmm. Hmm, yeah, we, um, yeah, we actually had a lot of training ourselves uh, yeah. coming back as missionaries. Mm-hmm. We uh, work with, uh, they've just changed their name to Serve Beyond. Uh, But they're with the Evangelical Free Church of Canada. So they actually provided us a lot of training. And part of that uh, was preparing our children and how we can how we can do that. I think uh, part of the reason we moved back when we did is because our children were still young Mm -hmm. and we knew the older they get, the The more attached they can get to life in Canada and the tougher it will be. So uh, for our not our last born who was born here, but at the time, our youngest daughter, Zawadi, she was just one. So for her, as long as she's with mommy and daddy, she was okay. okay. Our other son was two, almost three, and our oldest son had just turned five. So I think it was more the five-year-olds mm-hmm. uh, that we had to prepare, and it was a bit it was a bit tough on him for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, saying goodbye to friends, uh, but ensuring him that we can still, you know, nowadays... You can communicate with Zoom or even WhatsApp, uh, Facebook. There's so many opportunities to talk back and forth online and still see each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, So just trying to keep that communication open. Um, I think for him, as a small child, saying goodbye to his toys was tough. So we did pack some of his favorite toys. We actually packed his pillow and his bed sheet. That That was something we did. We had to bring in the suitcase. We (laughs) packed it up as small as we could. But we wanted him to feel as comfortable as possible when we moved here. So to have something like his pillow and his favorite bed sheet, uh, it really helped him as soon as he got to his, to, you know, his Shosho's house, yeah. to mm-hmm. his grandmother's house, to have those kind of comforts from home, yeah. I think really, helps, yeah. really helped. Okay. And otherwise, you know, we, we did have to be quite transparent with him, with the older one. We had to talk about it, yeah. yeah. Uh, take some pictures of his favorite toys that we couldn't bring. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was a bit tough, but I think bringing a few special items from home, mm-hmm. I think that, that helped. Good. That mm-hmm. helped a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you coming with them here 
how, how have they adapting with the culture now? Mm -hmm. I think they're they're really oh, good no, now. Good, yeah. yeah, like I, like for the older the our oldest son Mishael, moving when he was five was very tough on him, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it took him a long time to start enjoying the way of life here, because he was so used to things in Canada. Like for example, we had a lot of of swimming pools around, and, and you the can pool, they actually yeah. had days you could go for free. Mm -hmm. So he was used to this kind of routine of going swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd go to the park this day. Uh, we have lots of play groups with mothers and children. So we'd go to those. Mm -hmm. And he just had this beautiful image in his mind of how Canada is, all these good things he remembers. And then coming here, and because we live in a small town, suddenly there's no swimming pools, there's no play groups, there's no playgrounds. It was very mm -hmm. different for him to Adapt. adjust and adapt mm -hmm. um but he started appreciating i think other things like the way we live you know we have animals that he really enjoys oh, um he loves the chickens and collecting eggs and especially when we have baby chicks so i think mm -hmm. he's appreciate he's begun to appreciate a different kind of lifestyle and also see that even though it's different mm -hmm. there's a lot of joy that can that can come out yeah. of it as well Mm -hmm. It just is, it's a little different, yeah. you know, but, but we have, Henry's worked really hard to kind of make a play area for them at our home. He's made some nice wooden swings and we have a hammock and I think we've really tried to make uh, our home area as fun as possible for the kids. They have a bike path they can ride their bikes on and so it's different than it was in Canada, but we've tried to make our home as fun as possible for them i guess yeah. yeah um maybe you can add yeah i mean it was a little easier to to stay with my mom like when mm -hmm. we stayed for the first six months that was very helpful because yeah. i mean kids with their grandparents it was amazing so and then uh they, they have a older cousin yeah uh, another cousin there so it was easy to connect especially for michelle that helped because that guy is older but he's mm -hmm. closer to his age that was very helpful for him mm -hmm. So for that six months before we moved out, they had connected with this um, cousin, this cousin. And that was very helpful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what was the reaction from now Kenyan kids seeing them as mixed kids? Because here, our kids are black, right? Mm -hmm. But for US, they are mixed kids. Mm -hmm. What was yeah. the hiccup there? It's weird because a lot of people treat them like white kids. Okay. In fact, people call them white kids. They mm -hmm. call them Zungus. And... Mm -hmm. It's so different because uh, so in Canada they are considered black, yeah. not mm -hmm. even white at all. Mm -hmm. So here they're considered white. So it's it's different. Um, they do know they're different somehow, but um, but it, we 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 raise them in a, in a in an environment of knowing different is not weird. Yeah. There are people who do that, like you know, when it's different, you 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 bring some fear or some a connotation of yeah. separation. Mm -hmm. Now with them, we difference is good. Diversity is good. So they feel good. We, yeah, we teach that. I mean, that's why most of the things we do is actually to show young people anything you do that is different is okay because all our differences come on the same table. They create something beautiful. So you can you can be a love of sports and not music, and I can be a love of music and not sports, and all these things are making the world a better place. You can sit and watch nice songs. Uh, listen to nice songs as you watch big games mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. yeah so they do know they're different there's no hiding about that and we try to make sure that they understand being different is actually good mm -hmm. so i think yeah. um you know kids are kids though and mm -hmm. it it depends where we go. I feel, depends, you know, right. like living at his mom's, mm -hmm. uh, even here with the neighbor kids, they just play with our kids. They, they, you'll never hear a comment about no. mm -hmm. your skin is different or oh, your hair is different. They're just, huh? no, they're just playing. Even if they see me, ah, I'm Mama mm -hmm. Michelle, they, they, they can't say a word. It depends yeah. where we go. If we're maybe at a like supermarket, at a, uh, I don't know, a hotel, at a church somewhere. It depends where you are, then sometimes you get more attention. Yeah, but I find with screaming. the neighbors, yeah. with the neighbors at your mom's when we live there in her community. So in the village, they, they don't see any difference. They no. just play as kids. They just play yeah, as they kids. They just race and, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I think so. Mm -hmm. okay. Back to you, Henry. How was parenting, okay, difference of parenting in Canada and in Africa? 
Ooh. Next case. <laughs> so different. <laughs> Super different, yeah. So yeah. in Canada, you know, you would make jokes like you're gonna get a spanking and they laugh so much. Uh-huh. And then here, oh, show show you pinch them or uh, you know. Okay. So here you realize, oh man, you can actually get spanked. Okay. <laughs> so there's difference of uh, you know. No, no. Uh, in terms of we we actually don't spank them, but in terms of um, those type of conversations, yeah. like Kim, she homeschools, and mm-hmm. sometimes she will tell them, hey. You know, teachers spank kids at school. Mm-hmm. You want to go to public school mm-hmm. or you want to sit and listen? So, mm-hmm. so you use that. I think um, there's, there's just that openness mm-hmm. of um, of uh, less negotiation mm-hmm. in, in an African setting. Yeah. In, in North American setting, in Canada, you have to negotiate with the kids a lot. Yeah. You, you talk know, it out. You, you're like, we need to go and they say no. And then you, we need to go and then they say no and you can yell or whatever. Yeah. But here I can say we need to go. Yeah. Um, and all it's of a sudden, a there is not a choice. There's, yeah, our, our culture does not allow a lot of negotiation yeah. in terms of discipline. And, yeah. and I think it's, I love it, 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 it to be honest. I love it because it, it's easy on the parent, but it's good for the kids in the long run. Okay. Yeah, in a North American setting, it's more responsibility on the child. When you, when you have to learn how to make these decisions at a very young age, there are things children should not decide yeah, for themselves. Allow children to be children. You, you should not decide how long you should stay in the rain as a child. I think the mom should. If you're <laughs> wearing a jacket and boots, that's different. Yeah. If the rain is starting and you have a t-shirt, I'm like, let's go inside. Yeah. We should not negotiate. Yeah. So uh, our African culture, I love that. And it's easy on the kids in their adulthood. Yeah. yeah so a lot of, uh, that's why I think we have a less mental health issues in an African setting compared to North American setting. This, their brain starts getting working hard mm-hmm. earlier. This is my speculation. I, I don't have any data to back it up, but I'm just saying. But you have experience as a parent. Y- yeah. They work, American, they are entrusted with a lot of responsibility that children should not. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's time to eat to Gali and Skuma. You just, you eat your food. You it should not negotiate. I'm just thinking. I mean, yeah. there are rooms for negotiation, but there are rooms for, let's get on with it. Okay. Why? Because I'm the parent and you're not. I know vegetable is good for you. Cooler. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So. And you, um, Kim, parenting in in Canada mm-hmm. and parenting in Africa. What what do you feel? <laughs> uh, yeah. I think you know. I'm also. I was also trained as an early childhood educator. So a lot of the way I parent comes from my education as well. So like Henry saying, I think I was taught to have conversations with my children. Yes. And if my son says, I want to go play in the rain, I'll, I'll have a conversation with him about it. And I'll say, okay, well, mm-hmm. tell me why you want to. How long do you want to go out? Will you put your jacket on? We'll have a conversation. And I'm a bit more uh flexible on those things um but it it is maybe trouble when uh we're with family in kenya for with kenyan family or our family comes here now i go oh maybe i need to let some of that north american parenting put it under the table well our family's here because it can it can cause some trouble and you find now shosho saying no do this do that and uh, so it's a so bit challenging on your side. It can be a little challenging yeah. sometimes. Yeah, the I think I, I, spoiled, right? I, yeah, I can, I can allow my children to be very free and express themselves how they want, and uh, I don't think it really causes like any issues with us and our parenting. But definitely, but it does affect um, the people around us. Like where yeah. we rented, mm-hmm. where we rented, uh, there was nine complexes, or <laughs> nine homes, right? Mm-hmm. And the landlady had given us free water. Yeah. But because of how we raise our children, mm-hmm. if water is running on the tap, we allow them, it's sunny, let's play with the water. Oh, and yeah. you're playing with the water. And then <laughs> mm-hmm. all of a sudden, within a um, few months, they started charging water now to everybody. <laughs> so we changed the way of living for everybody because of how we raise our kids. Sure. So that can yeah. be a little different because we allow them to express. Mm-hmm. We allow them to play with mud and water and get dirty. And then mm-hmm. you, my mom will say, get out of there. And I will go get a camera mm-hmm. to take a picture mm-hmm. of that. So, yeah, so, it, so. it happened a, a few times actually yeah. at your mom's house when yeah, we lived there. And that. we let them play in the water one day because it was hot. So we had the water running. And, you know, his mm-hmm. mom got really upset because... You know, you're, to her, it's, it's water, wasting water, but water to me, so, us, yeah. especially from a North American view, I was seeing learning happening for the children. I saw they're exploring, mm-hmm. 
yeah. with their senses, you yeah. know. Well, so yeah. very two different mm-hmm. views. Okay. Yeah. Then now so. between you two, dad is, and mom coming from different culture mm-hmm. and now you're parenting. Do you disagree? How, no, how, is, how is the challenge of parenting? I, I think the first the year, the first, the first year. year when we had our firstborn, we probably disagreed a lot more because we were in, we had been in Canada for a year mm-hmm. and there was a lot of, yeah, we're learning how to be parents, first of all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we were coming from do, two different cultures. Yeah, at the beginning, there was some challenges because we are also learning so, how yeah, to we are parent. Rookies, you don't know what you're doing. But I think now we've kind of got into a groove by child number four. You know, I think I think we've done a good balance between combining uh, some parenting, you know, techniques from yeah, Kenya and around. also mm-hmm. in Canada. So I feel like we've kind of got a good combination of the both okay. mm-hmm. and also something that works for our family so we do give the, ch- the the children a chance to express themselves we give them a chance to negotiate if they feel like we're being unfair mm-hmm. but at the same time in certain situations you just, you're the parent yeah. and you need to say this is not allowed yeah. Yeah. or if you're at someone's house you need to behave this way it's non-negotiable mm-hmm. uh, so I think we do a good combination of the both but good I think it, it took time okay. it took time the first year was really tough. We mm-hmm. did argue a lot and we would disagree about different things. Uh, but I think now we've, you know, just through communication. What has been also very helpful is, again, I work with children and youth. So there's a lot of training that comes with that, a lot of reading and research that comes with that. She did that for school outside of a Christian setting. So she has a lot of uh, secular training on children. So when we talk, and you know, how to form them cognitively, effectively. It's so easy to to, 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 to just find a s- small balance that does not uh, crucify my culture mm-hmm. at the expense of hers or vice versa. So mm-hmm. I think we're getting a group. With the first one, it was tough. Yeah. With the first one, it was tough. But uh, as we keep going, yeah, man. With the sleep training, for example, I'll be like, uh, mm-hmm. and now you realize that Kilala, it helps. Mm. You're, you, you're more productive mm. when you get enough sleep. Mm. So we had those. We had those. Mm-hmm. But when yeah. we started out, yeah, the first one, there was a lot of sleep deprivation on the parents. There was a lot of so cranky back days. To, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. back to, we understand the difference of culture. Kenyan mm-hmm. men pays dowry to, <laughs> ah, to, to their girls. Did you pay dowry to your wife? No, no. We just, no, yeah. That is kind of why I married a white girl. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was broke. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. I'm no, I'm kidding. Okay. No, but yeah, uh, we just had a conversation with the dad and we were on the same page and and we decided to, you know, um, yeah, the blessing from the father and, yeah, okay. and then you just move on from there. Mm-hmm. There was no dowry. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we don't do dowry in Canada. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had never even heard of that okay. until I came to Kenya and I went, what? What, what is this is? thing? Huh? Yeah, it's weird. So, okay. Uh, so, yeah, my that wasn't even a question of him having to do that. But, like he said, he did need to ta- have a conversation with my, my dad and get his blessing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was important. Uh, after parenting, now, you now in Kenya, you're parenting. How is schooling your kid? How are you schooling? Mm-hmm. So, when we, when we first moved, you know, I wasn't sure which schools nearby would be good to take our children to. And also because of our lifestyle, you know, we homestead, we have animals here, we're missionaries, so we don't work a typical Monday to Friday job. So we decided that homeschooling would be the best. I had never planned on homeschooling, but just as life would have it, moving to a small a small town and not knowing the schools nearby, it just made sense to homeschool. Uh, so right now, I, my oldest son, he's in grade two. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Maisha, he's five. He's in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And the girls, they, they love to join. Mm-hmm. So our two-year-old and three-year-old, they're also there, but we don't do formal things with them. Okay. So mm-hmm. we, uh, we did make a small classroom in our, in our home where we can do school. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get, currently, we get the curriculum actually from Canada. We ship it here. Uh, there's, the nice thing about homeschooling is you can look at your child and you can see which type of learner are there because everybody learns different. Mm-hmm. 
Some people are more visual. Mm -hmm. Some people are hands-on. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. So what I love about homeschooling is you can pick the curriculum that will best suit your child, yeah. okay. opposed to being in a, a public school, even a private school, and you have to just do it the way the teacher has chosen. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have so much one-on-one -on -one time with my children. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can spend the whole day with one of them if they're having a tough time on a certain concept and I can really help them understand whatever it is in the best way that will be suitable for them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really been a blessing to be able to spend time with my children, to see them grow and see them learn. Um, yeah, it's been really wonderful and I think it suits our lifestyle as well. How mm -hmm. do you socialize them now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, we have a, a church plant mm -hmm. in town. Mm -hmm. uh, we do church planting here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So now you've settled here in Kenya, right? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as couples and family. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I'm a student, but at the same time, uh, we we do mission work. We work with young people in town mm -hmm. in Gilgil, so we came here to to uh, to work with young people and, and plant a church. Mm -hmm. That is, um, it's uh, more of uh, the others, the church of others. We, we people who don't. Uh, what do you mean others? Yeah. So uh, it's more of uh, you know we we want we want to meet young people in in. Um, what we emphasize is we, we don't want to invite people to, to the light. So we, we, we talk about how the light comes in the darkness. So young people where they are, with the music they listen to, with the kuna kunas and the um, poo, 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 or whatever is going on in the media. So we come to that and that's what you will see in our events. We will play the, the, the songs they have and, and just come to them. We do concerts that bring uh, Jesus to them. Because God comes to us, our God is Emmanuel, and then now from there, those who we get as young adults to our church community, the church plant we we will be launching soon is the others. So the 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 guys who can come to a church as they are, and, and you don't have to to change, you don't have to shave a certain way, you don't have to dress a certain code, yeah. as long as you're decent as to the to the law of the land yeah. of decency, <laughs> you could come out. Yeah. You can come in your pajamas if you want, but. Uh, you want to make sure you just look as good as the community will expect to, you know. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's kind of what we have. Mm -hmm. we, we we have guys coming out in, you know, in, with bandanas, with the dreadlocks, mm -hmm. with hats on. Mm -hmm. When we pray, we don't take our hats off, not because we disrespect God. It's because God accepts. There's nothing you can do to make God come closer or further from you. So that's kind of what we, 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 we're doing and, and just try to bring young people to to talk to God however they want. You can use any language, including Shang, to yeah. talk to God. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's the type of attachment to have. Uh, so we we are missionaries here. We work with young people Monday to Monday. To Monday. We have, yeah, we have some stuff we do that keeps young people around our community uh, seven days a week. Youth empowerment and growth. Exactly, yes. Okay. Youth empowerment uh, and uh, transformational entertainment. Ah where you know you get entertained but you learn and then you get transformed mm -hmm. so that's what jesus does yeah so uh yeah exactly so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and but, i think yeah. apart from that like with our our family uh we've really come to lo love homesteading our goal is to be self-sufficient one day mm -hmm. or almost self-sufficient so uh we've you know god blessed us with uh, a shamba and some land we've been able to you know build kind of our forever home um, and settle down here with our family and God just put on our hearts a love for nature and animals and uh, growing our own food and raising our own food. So mm -hmm. uh, we love homesteading. We have our animals. We have our garden where we get a lot of our, most of our vegetables from. Um, and I think it's, it's been great for the children too to really understand the importance of food mm -hmm. and where that comes from. Um, they help us out when they want to, we don't force them, but they love helping out with the animals and in the garden as well. So when we're at home and we're not doing ministry, uh, our home keeps us quite busy here too, because we have animals that we raise and a garden Take to tend to. Yeah. So, uh, kind of family wise, that's, that's what we're also doing. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So mm. what are the future plans for your ministry? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so right now we um, we do a feeding program. So we a lot of a lot of our ministries in, involves food. So mm -hmm. we just actually got helped us out. We have a fully functioning commercial kitchen. Mm -hmm. we, we have a commercial kitchen. We use there yeah, big stoves with wood and soda. So it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. it's so quick to make food and yeah. I mean, um, so we use a lot of meals uh, when we do North American snacks in the streets. When we do stuff like that, it's easy to feed a lot of people with less money. So it's amazing. So our future plan is to actually raise our food. Yeah. So at first we started out by buying most of the stuff like bread and muffins and stuff from the supermarket. Now we don't. Okay. We make it in the in the in, mm. our, in, in our the office. office. Yeah, which is mm -hmm. amazing. We make Ooh. we can make bread. We can make cookies, cake. We can make all of that, mm -hmm. which is amazing. So our hope is to actually grow the stuff. We need. We want to grow. When we have parties for young people, mm -hmm. uh, ex high school parties, back to school parties, we cook. Mm -hmm. We do nyamachoma, we do vegetables. We want to grow that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we want to make sure that we are growing stuff and kids are getting involved. Okay. They, they're they growing their own coriander, spinach, cabbage. We mm -hmm. can see where it's coming from. And then also just uh, we connect to these young people as we work together. So mm -hmm. especially when we cook, we don't do the cooking, they do. Okay. So we get a young guy with a knife to cut the mbuzi. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. of them have no idea how to chop. Nyamachoma Mbuzi, maybe dad dad does it all the time mm. or uh, we work with very kids from humble backgrounds who you know most of the things we do is the first time we're doing with them. Mm -hmm. So you're so, really exposing them. Exactly, yeah. That's the idea. Just the exposure. Mm -hmm. We want hands on. Mm -hmm. When we bring a DJ, we want the DJ to be open to let the kids around it. Wow. Why? Because you can make money being a DJ. Yes, He's right. raising his family. He mm. owns a house. He mm. owns a car. Ah. Or our guy who does T shirts and he prints T shirts. We don't print them in the office and bring them to the kids, no. We want to do it on site. Yeah. If somebody comes on stage, we, what we do is we put up a stage. We do something called street freedom session, mm -hmm. the freedom emphasis. Mm -hmm. Your God is sets you free to do whatever you do in life as long as you have God. Yeah, sure. It can succeed. It's not about, you know, being so smart and get straight A's. A's without God, mm, there's something we say in Swahili. Your talent, whatever you have, in kupele kambali, God na kupele kambali zaidi. So that's the thing. If it's soccer, singing, whatever it is, it can take you far, but God takes you far down. Yeah. So the exposure is to everything. We we print T-shirts on site. We call them on stage. Do whatever you want. Yeah. You can do poem. You can do. You can chongoana. You can be funny and make comedy. Churchill does it, and he's successful. Or you can act out something. You can model. You can, you know, ne the next Lupita Nyong'o can come from Gilgit. You don't know. <laughs> so with God, everything is possible. But you, it has to be something. He works with something, yeah. not just nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And God has given you something. So mm -hmm. uh, that exposure is good. And uh, so they come and do it hands-on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's hair braiding, whatever it is, uh, we bring people who can expose them. I've had my sister come out to one of our events. And she does uh, massage and, and beauty therapy and the saloon and all that okay. and God is using a lot so she can expose them to that and stuff like that so wow. mm -hmm. so how, how is the going now and the impact are they happy are they adapting mm -hmm. the young people mm -hmm. oh kids are loving how we uh, it's yeah it's how we're bringing Jesus so uh mm -hmm. God has you, you see everyone is called to do something different something specific and it's good to just plug into whatever god has told you to do so for us we felt like our main job is to preach the kingdom and kids get saved which they are but how we do it now in many churches will differ they're all after the same goal yeah. so how we do it is coming through the the body meeting the men the physical needs and the mental needs wow. so with the physical needs we are we are emphasizing on fun mm -hmm. fun having a fun mm. there is a reason why abraham's son was named isaac mm. laughter fun mm. so we have fun mm. yeah there's something called back to eden and the word eden in the bible means pleasure the land of a good time yeah so yeah so we have fun they are loving having fun playing soccer whoever loves soccer we have fun whoever loves that's why we cook food mm -hmm. people love food food mm -hmm. is good mm -hmm. yeah so <laughs> yeah i do don't give them food because they're poor they yeah. need meals we can't even fill their stomach with the food we eat except we do fill the stomachs, even mm -hmm. ours, because we eat together. Yeah. But we emphasize something, food, when you eat alone, is food. Yeah. When you eat together, is a meal, yeah. and the gospel is a meal. Mm -hmm. 
God mm-hmm. is a meal. Community comes in a meal. So that's the mo- the part that it, we connect. We start knowing names. We start, and uh, yeah. So the young people are loving it when they do these events. They're showing up in big numbers. They're calling others. Uh, we started a new team, for example. It's not even three months old, and now we are about a hundred. Yesterday we had ninety five. We have almost a hundred consistent every Friday, mm-hmm. showing up, and it's amazing. And uh, this is just sports. This is soccer, and then we have something different. So our prayer is to continue meeting kids where they're having a good time. So when they mm-hmm. so if they have a good time, they can learn. Even if they don't get saved or whatever, mm-hmm. it's good. They learn. You will learn life skills, learn how to socialize, learn how to read the room. Yeah. And then now, of course, we know Jesus is the only change. So then you preach Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel you're leaving your purpose of uh, your missionary calling, both of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. Ah. We, we are loving it. It's small steps, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So we can talk. <laughs> this is, I've taken over that one. Eh? So, well, <laughs> so it's yeah. a good yeah. okay. conversation. Mm-hmm.
Okay. Mm-hmm. So where can people find you or reach out to you? Mm-hmm. So you can see your socials, mm-hmm. YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, we have a few different options. Like there's our social media and then we also have uh, our, our church website as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go on YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, our YouTube channel is We Are Homesteaders. We Are Homesteaders. Okay. And I believe our email is is there. You can contact us on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your website? And then our website for the church, mm-hmm. um, movedchurch.org. Mm-hmm. You can also send us that one. Yes. Moved, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Instagram? Ah, uh, we do have yeah, Instagram and Facebook we have yeah, for the church Facebook. account actually, not for mm-hmm. our personal YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the church, uh, if you just look up Moved Church mm-hmm. on Instagram if you, if you or so Facebook. Moved Church in all platforms. Moved you just church. Google that, okay. you, it will be us. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, for our personal family, we just have the YouTube account.